value literary legends and luminaries. I'm Julie and welcome to the very first episode of Booksmart. Today we're talking about John Green's The Anthropocene Reviewed, Essays on a Human-Centered Planet. Let me begin by confessing that I don't read a lot of fiction. As a teacher, I stumbled upon Crash Course videos on history and literature, which I adored because those videos didn't water down any information. I didn't realize that that John Green was the same John Green who wrote many of the books I had in my school library, like The Fault in Our Stars, which I've never read, but I did see the movie. So this book is the first I've read of John Green's work. I realize the Anthropocene reviewed is a couple years old. Here at Booksmart, I'm not interested in reading new releases. Plus, I buy many of my books at my local used bookstore. My goal is to read books that will teach me more about the world in which we live and to broaden my horizons, basically to make me think. I love finishing books that I want to talk about with someone, which is partly why I started Booksmart. The Anthropocene Review did just that, so it is the perfect book for my first episode. The subheading for the book says, Essays on a Human-Centered Planet. I assume this book would focus more on how we as humans are destroying the planet and equally how we're attempting to save the planet from all that we've done. I had just read an article on how a clothing dump can now be seen from space. Why are we throwing away brand new clothes? But this is not that book. John Green's selection of essays is a bit random, although intriguing. Natural things like Haley's Comet, Canada Geese, Sunsets, mixed with the likes of Diet Dr. Pepper, Super Mario Kart, and Hot Dogs. It's actually based on a podcast, which I only discovered after Googling. I've never watched it, but that's where the Anthropocene Review book came from. First, let me say something about essays. They are an underrated category of nonfiction books. Barnes & Noble has a tiny section crammed between anthologies and academic studies backed by the classic literature. The general reader is not going to go back to that section. Plus, who wants to read something that is categorized as essays, considering we all have nightmares about essay writing from high school, which doesn't make sense because essays don't have to be boring, yet that's exactly how we teach them. I don't know why they don't place these essay books in with memoirs, because essentially that's what they are. As readers, we learn a lot about the author, we learn a lot about life, but instead of writing it using a narrative structure like a fictional book, each chapter operates like a self-standing episode, which are then all linked together within a theme. Some of these essay memoirs are more linked to that central theme than others. I read tons of memoirs, but I particularly enjoy these essay books. More authors should use that format. And that's another reason why I picked up this book. John Green blends his personal experiences with these topics and ends many of them with a profound thought, which you may or may not agree with. That's the best thing about reading. You don't have to agree with the author. Sometimes disagreeing with the writer gives you even more to ponder. At the very end of each essay, he rates all his topics, giving each one X amount of stars, which I found rather endearing, although I read other reviews that found it annoying or gimmicky. To each their own. Now, what can you get out of reading this book? You might run across topics that you already knew about, like I did with teddy bears. Yet I didn't know the complete backstory to Monopoly, so that was fascinating, and I had no idea what the yips were. Yet this is why I love essay books. The writer captures these little things that we wouldn't normally think about. It's like poetry. When the poet will forever capture something like a dewdrop on a leaf, something we wouldn't normally think about or even pay attention to. Have you ever thought about scratch and sniff stickers? If you didn't grow up in the 80s, you probably didn't, and you are totally missing out. What about the Piggly Wiggly? We had a hinky dinky, not a Piggly Wiggly, but I get his message about capitalism. What about the Bonville Sock Flats, where John Green writes, humans are not the protagonists of this planet's story. And finally, have you ever given any thought much to whispering? John Green covers all these topics, including one on football, which really confused me because it was about soccer. Collectively, these essays speak to our existence, both with nature and with products of our own creation. It's about all those little things in life we take for granted that we, that we interact with or that we use that shape our life in some way, shape or form, with some essays more relatable than others. To give you an example of how John Green makes you think, about the world around you, let me read an essay about the penguins of Madagascar. I watched this movie years ago, but I do remember the opening scene, which is the focus of his essay. The sound guy uses a boom mic to whack the penguins from behind, forcing them into the great unknown. It's a children's movie, so of course the penguins survive and go on to great adventures. But every time I watch Penguins of Madagascar, I think of how almost all of us are invisible to penguins almost all of the time. And yet we are nonetheless their biggest threat and also their best hope. In that respect, we are a kind of God and not a particularly benevolent one. Wow, I mean, doesn't that make you think? And this is a movie, this is an opening scene of a movie. 
And it really makes you think about that. I've always wondered why cameramen don't flip over the little sea turtles that are on the racks or why they don't honk their horns when a lion is stalking a herd of zebras. Good books make you pause and think and relate. Now, let me read you an example of his ratings. In this one, John Green is critiquing Old Lang Syne, you know, the New Year's Eve song. He says, we live in hope that life will get better and more importantly, that it will go on, that love will survive even though we will not. And between now and then, we are here because we're here, because we're here, because we're here. I give Old Lang Syne five stars. Have you given much thought to a tune most of us know, yet we don't really know the words to? And my last little snippet is in regards to the internet. John Green was born just a few months after me, so I can relate to his description of dial-up and no one being able to use the phone when you're on the internet. He writes about the internet. What does it say that I can't imagine my life or my work without the internet? What does it mean to have my way of thinking and my way of being so profoundly shaped by machine logic? What does it mean that, having been part of the internet for so long, the internet is also part of me? My friend Stan Muller tells me that when you're living in the middle of history, you never know what it means. I am living in the middle of the internet. I have no idea what it means. I give the internet three stars. When you're living in the middle of history, you never know what it means. I love that. It's so current. Look at the pandemic. That's living history. So what does it all mean? That's the question John Green attempts to answer with his topic choices. You won't necessarily like all his essays, which is fine. I lost interest in his football. That was really soccer essays. Could he have made the book more planet-centered in regards to humans? Sure. For instance, if he really wanted to talk about sports, he could have had an essay about some of the Olympic facilities that now sit empty across the world. And I should have never read his essay about his bout with viral meningitis, especially right before I went to bed, because then I was convinced I had none other than viral meningitis because I had a headache that day that wouldn't go away. But that's the joy of reading essays. They're not extensively long and you're bound to find many that make you think, are universal in theme, and make you just that much more aware of the world around you and maybe it will inspire you to write your own essays. If John Green wrote an essay all about Diet Dr. Pepper, I could write one on the joys of fountain pop, particularly Coke and Sherry Coke, and maybe some Dr. Pepper. Overall, I enjoyed the Anthropo Anthropocene reviewed. I love the intriguing story regarding the photograph, three farmers on their way to a dance. I love looking at old photographs, wondering what the context of the picture was and about the person who took it. I learned tidbits about silly landmarks like the world's largest ball of paint, and I changed my perspective just ever so slightly regarding wintry mix. Yes, winter is beautiful. I just don't want to live in it. I give the Anthropocene reviewed four stars. That's it for today. My goal here at Booksmart is to get a little bit smarter. One book at a time.